Ladies and gentlemen, your Cornhusker wrestling team has come off to a great start in this NCAA wrestling championship. So I'm here to break down uh, each wrestler, each of the nine wrestlers in their uh, respective matches to begin the first round of this thing. Beautiful start, and I could not be any happier with where we're at. Uh, we're going neck and neck right now with Penn State. We actually have the lead for most of the first round up until uh, around 197, 285, when, uh, uh, especially when Nash went down at 285. But let's start uh, eight wins, one loss. Uh, the one loss was entirely expected, but uh, make no mistake, there was great effort by Nash Hitmarker as he went up against Colton Schultz, the number three guy in the country. Uh, who is also a uh, national champion. So, uh, great start by this wrestling team. Let's uh, start with 125. We got uh, Caleb Smith, who took on Michael D'Agostino. Right out of the gate, we had a classic matchup. Uh, I was really worried about this one, to say the least. It was a scoreless first period. In the second, uh, Smith takes the top position and nearly... Puts a fall on the caveman. I like to call the Augustino the caveman because he looks like a caveman. Um, who uh, hit uh, the Augustino himself has actually uh, in his five of his last six matches took his matches to overtime, which this one did too. But uh, the Augustino uh, in the second period he explodes out with a minute to take the. Matches first point uh, in the third period. Caleb Smith quickly gets out on bottom uh, to the mat of the match at uh, one with uh, less than 30 seconds to go. Smith att attempts to go from behind takedown and takes the action to the edge of the mat, but ultimately takes the match into sudden victory. Um, so we're in period three here. Uh, now moving on to overtime with one second left. Uh, Caleb Smith gets a takedown. Uh, and uh, it was close to the edge, and rightfully so for Michigan's head coach to throw the challenge brick. But ultimately, Smith did get the takedown clearly and got a nice win uh, to start things off. Uh, so then we move to 133 with Jacob Van D taking on Justin Farber. Uh, with 2.26 left to go in the first, Van D gets a quick takedown and allows Farber right back up for a 3-1 to one lead into the second period. Van D starts the second period on top and rides out Farber the entire period. Uh, then Van D pops right out from the bottom to begin the third period to make it a 4-1 to one match. Uh, with riding time secured and an attempted leg lock takedown, uh, Van D takes the match 5-1 uh, to one to move into the second championship uh, round for this thing. Uh, so then we are now at 141 with Brock Hardy, who starts a match with the uh, single leg attempt, uh, with two single leg attempts, but both leading into stalemates initially. His third attempt was successful with just about a minute left in the first. Brock Hardy gets a quick escape in the second period, along with a quick takedown to ultimately gain additional back points. After a slip up, Pusino gets a reversal to make uh, the match 10 to two. Uh, starting at neutral in the third period, uh, Hardy again gets a very quick takedown and works on trying to turn Pusino uh, once again, but uh, this Pusino guy is slippery as hell uh, and gets another escape. After stoppage, the men go back to neutral as Hardy gets another takedown to get the tech fall victory. Hardy looked very impressive in this match. Uh, moving on to 149. Uh, as you all know, so I'm sitting here typing my notes, uh, and I just can't do it quick enough. And then I look up, and Peyton Rob has Michael Ketta on his back and gets the pin. So I would assume he got the double leg takedown or whatever and just got got him stuck from there. It was a very quick match, uh, so he moves on to second round. Um, 157 pounds now. Peyton Robb taking on Trevor Chumbly from Northwestern. A late scramble at the end of the first is all that occurred in that period. 
starting off the second period, Rob gets a very quick escape to make it one to nothing. Both men start at neutral in the third period with both men taking multiple shots and trying to uh, take control. Uh, Rob uh, holds on single leg and getting the 1-0 victory for the win. So not a pretty win, but it is a win. Sometimes you just get a win ugly like that. Uh, so uh, that's another Cornhusker into the second round. So at 165 pounds, Antrell Taylor takes on Holden Heller. Taylor gets a very contested takedown with 30 seconds left into the first period. In the second period, Taylor quickly explodes from the bottom to gain a 4-0 advantage with tie-ups to follow. Heller uh, gets Taylor with an ankle uh, two pick for an easy takedown for a ride out to end the period. Heller elects to go neutral for the third period with just under a minute left. Taylor beautifully gets a double leg takedown and additionally rides out Heller for the rest of the way to cruise on to an 11-0 major decision in that. Um, so now moving, we skip 174, we move on to 184 as Lenny Pinto takes on Caleb Hopkins. And this is what I was talking about earlier this morning. Lenny Pinto fires out the gate, and that's what he did. Uh, with no time to waste, he gets a double leg takedown and lets Hopkins right back up to seek another. Uh, Pinto gets two additional takedowns to make it a 9-2 uh, score with uh, within seconds and rides out Hopkins the rest of the period. And just 10 seconds into the second, Pinto from the bottom gets a fiery reversal while electing to go neutral within the period to seek another takedown. But Hopkins gets a takedown himself to get back into the match and make it an 11-6 affair to end the second period. This is what I was talking about. Pinto seems to kind of run out of juice during, like, midway into a match. Um... But then in the third period, Pinto d does start on bottom and gets a quick escape and then additionally gets another takedown. Another escape by Hopkins to make it a 15-7 match. And after a scramble, Pinto gets another takedown plus some near fall points and ends the match with a tech fall. Uh, but not without the time <laughs> expiring. So he, he gets those late points and gets a late tech fall in that one. Uh, so, bonus points galore for us there. Uh, moving on to 197, Silas Allred takes on Luke Georg, a very strong Luke Georg, to say the least. This guy is strong. Uh, Georg does get a takedown right out of the gate, too. Takes Silas by surprise in that. Uh, but then Silas, you know, quickly gets an escape. With 145 left, Silas gets a takedown and works uh, to flatten uh, Georg, but he was just too strong uh, to do that too. Uh, Silas takes bottom to start the second period and gets a quick five second escape to make it a five three, uh, to make it five three. Georg takes a shot, but Allred beautifully counters with a basic cow catcher to get another takedown and a ride out for the rest of the period. Silas again takes bottom in the third to get an escape uh, with additional hand fighting to end the match with a 10-3 victory. So could not get bonus points there. It would have been nice to get that. Um, and then at 285, we have Nash Hutmacher taking on Colton Schultz. Um, I will say Nash wrestled beautifully, uh, even though it was a loss. Uh, Nash, you know... Uh, the last time out, these two men have faced each other this season with the last duel of the season. Uh, Nash, uh, you know, losing the first time to Colton Schultz. Uh, pretty bad, but Nash improved in this match. Uh, he showed prom uh, promise pulling Schultz for uh, towards him to look for a single leg. Uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, when you got the wrist control and you got the elbow, you know, and the guy has his foot forward, you can usually pull him to you and get that ankle pick. Um, he about had it. He had his uh, uh, leg, you know, but Schultz just quickly got out of that. Um, but, man, I was sitting there going, uh, tell, tell myself, you know, that he had a beautiful opportunity to do, opportunity to do that. And uh, which he tried, you know, but ultimately could not get it. Um, 
but he, he has really improved on his feet. Uh, no score at the end of the first. Second period started with Nash on top and Schultz getting an escape. Uh, with no control, Nash gets taken down but does get an escape to make it a 1-4 match uh, to end the second period. Starting in the third period, uh, Hootmacher does get an escape from bottom. Great effort from Nash to look for a takedown, but Schultz eventually wears him out and gets the 10-3 victory. Um, but yes, I am excited to see how Nash can do in the consolation rounds. So let's look where these guys are uh, wrestling uh, for the next round. So uh, going back to 125, we get Caleb Smith, who's taken on Luke Stanich from Lehigh, second seeded uh, wrestler in this tournament. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, but man, uh, the whole overview of this tournament, there has been some major upsets already. And... Uh, Man, there's going to be plenty more tonight. There's going to be some fantastic matches. Uh, but, yes, Caleb Smith takes on Luke Stanage. Uh, I, I think that could be a pretty good match in and of itself. Uh, 133, Jacob Van D, number 14 uh, seeded guy, uh, taking on Kai Irene, who is number three from North Carolina State. That guy is a problem child. So, uh, first two matches right out of the gate, it's going to be a very, it, it's going to be difficult regardless. Uh, second, I mean, first round something, but then second, it just gets tougher as the tournament goes on. I'll just put it that way. Uh, each round is not safe for anybody. So, yes, Jacob Van D up against Kai Orin. Um Can he get this? Uh, when he will take on Dominic Zaccone or Vito Arujo from Cornell. So it's it's just not going to be easy um, at all. Uh, so then we move on to 141. Brock Hardy taking on Sergio Limley from Michigan. 8-9 uh, matchup. This is just going to be another uh, dogfight. Um, but if Brock Hardy wrestles the way he did in the first round, I think he can get this. I really do. So, uh, moving on to 149, Ridge Lovett, number one, taking on number 17 seeded uh, Graham Brooks. I look for another, uh, I, I like to say, easy win for Ridge Lovett to move on into the next round. Uh, if, the, if I were to bet on anybody winning in this round, it'd definitely be Ridge. I'll just put it that way. So, moving on to 157, we get Peyton Robb. Taking on Will Luan from Michigan. Another Nebraska-Michigan matchup. Eight and nine matchup. Uh, this is a very important round, especially for uh, team scoring. Because, uh, you know, Michigan has a tendency to climb up. And so this is our chance to say, screw it. Let's, let's win these matches. And they're very winnable. They, they can be won. Uh, it's going to be tough, uh, but, uh, yeah, so that that's going to be a very, very tough matchup for Peyton Robb, and maybe old Peyton Robb will come out of his shell and finally get a big victory for us. Okay, at 165, another 8-9 and nine matchup. Uh, this time it's Antrell Taylor taking on Peyton Hall of West Virginia. Peyton Hall is a uh, dynamic wrestler. Uh, I mean, it, it's a loaded weight class. I mean, all these weight classes are obviously loaded, but this this one's going to be tough. I I will say uh, Antrell Taylor, you know, I think this is his coming out show party, and he'll get a big, nice big win over Peyton Hall. So uh, 174 is blank for us. Uh, Bubba Wilson did not make it this year, unfortunately. Uh, so moving on to 184. We will have Lenny Pinto taking on Jaden Bullock of uh, Michigan, another Nebraska-Michigan matchup. What do you know? Um, but I, I really think uh, Pinto will cruise on to uh, make it to the third round here. So 197, we got Silas Allred taking on... Oh, damn it. I totally did not update that yet. But he will take on Andy Smith from Virginia Tech. Um, yeah, I 
I think he'll get a victory here. I mean, who knows? There's been a ton of upsets. Uh, two Penn State wrestlers already are in the consolation round, if that is any indication. We are tied with Penn State with the number of wrestlers in the championship round at this moment. So, uh, big, big second round coming up, for sure. This one, of course, you know, it is Penn State. But if we can advance six of eight wrestlers, that would be a tremendous job for us. Going to be tough, but that's all there is to it. Uh, that, that's why they're here, you know. Uh, so yeah, he will take on Andy Smith. Uh, I do believe, uh, Silas will easily cruise on a victory in that one. Like I said, it's not a given, but just, uh, based on, uh, how I've seen everything so far, I think that is the case. So it looks like, uh, so I did not update this. I'll have to go on track wrestling real quick. Uh, to actually get Nash's matchup uh, here in the consolation round. So he will take on uh, Bucknovich from Colorado State. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to that one. But like I said, um, let me see, where is Bucknovich? Oh, man, I, okay, I cannot find him. Oh, there he is. Okay, so Bucknovich, uh, so this is a uh, very important matchup for Nash, you know. I said, I, I feel like he can be an All-American in this thing, and I still stand by that. This uh, uh, Bucknovich, or wh whatever you want to call him, I, I don't really know much about him. He wrestles for Colorado State, which is, uh, Big 12, but um, uh, not a very high finish in the Big 12 tournament, but uh, we'll see how uh, Nash fares in that. I, I'm very intrigued to see how he does in this thing. I think he can get this win and uh, move on. So um, that is the first round of this thing. I do got some uh, additional uh, recaps here. So I talked about swimming and diving this morning. Uh, Gina Jorgensen uh, in the 500 freestyle. Uh, let's look in uh, what she did. She improved her uh, personal best time with a 441.03. Her previous time was a 441.19, so that's good for her. Uh, she notched her career best finish at the NCAAs after being seated uh, at 37th. She climbed to a 27th place finish in this thing. At last year's NCAA, she finished 56 in the 500 freestyle. So, um, good for her. She uh, miraculously improved uh, overall. Um, she will be competing in the 400 individual medley prelims tomorrow at 9 and the 1650 freestyle final on Saturday at 5. And uh, you still got Kelsey Claremont set to comp uh, compete on Saturday uh, with the uh, diving, uh, platform diving uh, on Saturday at 9 for the prelims. So uh, stay tuned for uh, and see how well these women fare in their respective competitions. All right. So I do got a few more previews for you guys. Uh, starting with the women's gymnastics in the Big Ten Championships. Uh, they uh, are 11 and 9 and 4 and 5 in the Big Ten this year. So far, they will travel to East Lansing, Michigan to take part. Uh, and that will take place on Saturday. They will compete in the first session of the championships, which is at 11 a.m., uh, so the last time out for these ladies, uh, they concluded their regular season slate with a 198.100 to a 197.375 loss to Arkansas on Friday, March 15th. Despite falling to the Razorbacks, the Big Red posted their highest team score of the year with a 197.375 and also posted season high totals on Vault and Beam. Um, 
Emma Spence claimed the all-around title with a career-high tying uh, 39-650. Three Huskers, Spence, Sophia, McClellan, and Cinch Baxay, all earned a share of the beam title, each notching a 9-900. Uh, six Husker athletes posted uh, new or tied career highs. Isabel Sycon on vault and beam. Spence in the all-around and floor. Isaiah Hall on vault. Whitney Jenks on floor. McClellan, McClellan on floor. And back say on beam. Um, so scouting the competition here real quick. Uh, they'll take on uh, number 24 Penn State, Maryland, Illinois, Iowa, and Rutgers. They already faced all five of its opponents and has come out victorious against all of them except for Maryland. So expect a nice big day for ladies gymnastics on Saturday. Uh, moving on to women's tennis. Uh, very underrated team here at UNL. Um, they'll uh, welcome Northwestern, who is ranked number 35 at the moment uh, on Friday. Uh, and then on Sunday, they will take on number 34, Illinois. Uh, the match will be live streamed on PlaySite and blah, 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 if you're all interested in that. Uh, so here's a little about Northwestern real quick. Junior Justine Leong is ranked number 88 in singles and number 50 with doubles partner Christina Hand. Uh, they are also uh, ranked number 34 after defeating uh, number 75 Rutgers 4 to nothing and number 45 Maryland 6 to 1 last weekend. Their roster consists of three graduate students, one senior, three se uh, juniors, and uh, one sophomore and two freshmen. Uh, <clears throat> They lead in the all-time series, 10-2 uh, to 2 against Nebraska. Last season, they swept us for to nothing. So hopefully we can improve from that. All right, so here's a little about Illinois real quick. They are undefeated in the Big Ten after defeating Maryland and Rutgers earlier in the season. Sophomore McKenna, uh, this, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Schaffbauer. Leads Illinois 11 to 5 in singles. Doubles pair Megan Heiser and Alice, Alice Zoo lead with a 9 to 1 record in doubles play. This is Evan Clark's eighth year as head coach. Clark was named head coach after serving as the interim head coach during the 2015 16 season for the Illini. Last season, Illinois edged out the Huskers 4 to 3. Illinois leads the series 6 5 all time. So that is your preview for women's tennis for the weekend. Uh, and then we get softball taking on Illinois on uh, tomorrow. Uh, 30 and, Nebraska's 30 and 15 in conference play the last two seasons, finishing second in the regular season standings in 2022 and fourth in 2023. Nebraska and Northwestern are the only two Big Ten teams who have won 30 conference game, games over the last two seasons. Um, and obviously this is our uh, conference opener. Uh, we swept the opening ser series of the conference season each of the past two seasons. In 2022, Nebraska won both games of a shortened series at number 19 Michigan. Last year, the uh, Huskers swept a three-game series against Purdue at Bullen Stadium. So that's going to do it for uh, this session, folks. Uh, stay tuned, and I will have updates for uh, session two uh, for the uh, NCAA Wrestling Championships. So uh, hopefully these Huskers uh, keep doing what they're doing right now. Um, like I said, huge first round for us. It's only going to get harder, though. And uh, this is a very, very, I mean, okay, so all rounds are important for te the team race. But this one is almost... Uh, like it's almost a determining round, if you will. This this one's this one's big. I will say that. So hopefully uh, we come out on top on all eight matches, and and then the additional consolation match from Nash. So here we go. Let's begin session two. Go big red.